All right. So thank you all for joining us. Um, if you've just joined, um, I, I mentioned a, a little bit ago that I dropped a link into the chat. If you want to give that a click and visit CISabroad.com and just uh, quickly get signed up to connect with one of our advising team, feel free to do that. Also, you can do that by scanning the QR code on the top left. This, this will be on every slide. Um, and we even have a bit.ly link, which I had to figure out. It's my first time using it. Um, but thank you again for joining us. Um, we're going to make the presentation part of this really quick, um, hopefully under 10 minutes. And then we'll have time for any questions and conversation that, um, about studying abroad. All right. So just a quick introduction. Um, who am I? Uh, my name is Kent Moore. I'm Director of University Relations at CIS Abroad. Um, for, do, for those of you that don't know, CIS Abroad is a, a longtime partner of the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa, and uh, we're based in Massachusetts. I personally am based in North Carolina, uh, in Chapel Hill. Um, and in study abroad, we always talk about our own study abroad experiences. Um, so I had to, to inform you of, of my, uh, my time abroad as an undergrad, uh, which was uh, at the University of South Carolina. Uh, so I studied in Spain, Thailand, and India. And that's a photo of me there when I had a lot more hair um, <laughs> back in the day, uh, I believe in, in Vietnam, uh, which was a, just a side trip from my Thailand program. And then a grad degree in the Netherlands. And I've been at CIS abroad for about five years now. Um, and in that time, I've seen a lot of University of Alabama students participate on CIS abroad programs. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about where they like to go and what they like to do in terms of our programs. Um, but um, yeah, I'm yeah, particularly excited to, to connect with you all today. Okay, so um, just getting straight into it, why study abroad with CIS? Uh, or, and I should say, not just study abroad. Why not? Why intern abroad? Why uh, do service learning abroad? Um, and things like that. Um, and it really boils down, I think, to three things. Number one is affordability. When I was a an undergraduate student, affordability was uh, an enormous factor in my decision making process. Uh, and I know it's, it's probably very important uh, for, for a lot of you as well. Uh, we really believe that study abroad is absolutely for everyone. Um, and we work hard to keep our program fees very low. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about things around finances in, in a bit, uh, particularly about refund policies, which we're getting a lot of questions about, um, obviously, in this, this um, new normal situation we're all in uh, during the pandemic. Um, Reason number two, support. What I love about our program models is that they are, um, they offer just enough support uh, for a student who wants to be, um, wants to be independent uh, on a program abroad. So you're taking classes with local students, you're, um, you, you might be living, you know, in, a, in a, an apartment setting with students from around the world, um, and you can take full advantage of that. But we also have on-site staff in each of our uh, locations. So, um, that if you need that extra support, it's there for you uh, from the moment you arrive at the airport all the way through the end of the program. And number three is cultural immersion. Um, immersion is key. It's the foundation really of all of our programs. Um, and I think this goes back to, to our program model in, in that um, we're very intentional about connecting American students with, with the host culture, um, not taking classes in, a, in an American bubble, but uh, really kind of delving into the culture and being part of it. And lastly, I just wanted to shamelessly plug our uh, recent awards from uh, websites like goabroad.com and gooverseas.com. Um, these, by the way, are really helpful resources if you, if you haven't um, checked them out yet uh, for anything and everything around study abroad. Uh, you can find a lot of good stuff on here, articles, blogs, um, program reviews, and things like that. So what can I do abroad? Um, CIS so yes, Abroad has programs um, all over the world and we do semester, summer programs, intern programs, a uh, variety of different program models. Um, but in terms of location, um, you can see here we have programs in Europe in eight countries and 60 programs. So I'm just gonna run through these really quickly because we don't have a ton of time to talk about them, but I can take questions about specific locations later. So you can see the list of um, locations there on the left and highlighted in orange on the right. Um, Funnily enough, the first one is, is really our most popular program location for Alabama students, and that's London, England. Uh, we have two programs there, one at the University of Roehampton and the other one at the University of Westminster. Uh, so a really popular spot. And then number two, Barcelona, Spain. 
uh, also particularly popular for uh, semester study abroad, summer programs, and intern abroad programs as well. At uh, a number of different universities are based there actually. And then Florence, Italy, uh, perennially uh, a popular spot for, for students from the US. Uh, in Africa and Asia Pacific, uh, we have programs in seven countries. Um, the first of which is South Africa. So here we partner with the University of Cape Town and Stellenbosch University, uh, which is also near Cape Town. Um, so students really connect with the, uh, the history of Nelson Mandela there, um, the beautiful view of Table Mountain that um, the University of Cape Town sits right beneath. Um, and then in Australia, one of our most popular options is at Bond University uh, on the Gold Coast of Australia. Um, the campus is about five to 10 minutes from the beach. Um, students do a lot of um, well, spend a lot of time in the water, as you can see the student doing, but also visiting uh, different islands and things like that. It's very close to the Great Barrier Reef, this, this particular school. And my personal favorite, you, you remember uh, moments ago I mentioned I studied in Thailand. Um, the CIS Abroad Thailand program is my favorite for a number of reasons, but most importantly, it's, it's our number one most affordable semester option. Um, and we've had a lot of Alabama students do it as well. And you get to hang out with elephants. So, you know, you can't really beat that. Uh, to, to round out this region, uh, we also have programs in South Korea, uh, Vietnam, and Japan. And then in the Americas, uh, it's a smaller list of programs, but some really great ones. Uh, five countries, 18 programs. The one I want to highlight here is in Honolulu, Hawaii. Not a lot of um, education abroad organizations have programs in Hawaii, but um, it's, it's a fantastic option to check out, especially right now because um, students are not required to have a passport or have a student visa to visit Hawaii. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, we have a fantastic site director here. One of my favorites, her name is Marina, uh, and she is just the perfect person to kind of be that cultural bridge between you as a student and her hometown in Buenos Aires. And then finally, uh, San Jose, Costa Rica is, um, is probably the, the program that is, um, I think, second to Thailand on the most affordable list. So definitely look into that one as well. Some great academic options in the arts, business, and things like that as well. So what do University of Alabama students do uh, with CIS abroad in our programs? And I made a little joke here. What do they not do? Because we've had Alabama students, I think, on um, most, if not all, of our programs around the world. Um, as I mentioned before, our most popular uh, semester program is in London. So the options there at Roehampton and Westminster. Um, we usually have a good group of Alabama students on this program. One of those, uh, I think, two years ago was Oscar, who you see here on the left. Uh, this is the front of our catalog that we always uh, have at study abroad fairs when they're in person. Um, so we have a quite a long history of putting Alabama students on the front of our catalog. And you'll see Ali here on the right who studied with us in uh, Peru. And she's hanging out at Machu Picchu there, which is, I think, a pretty epic photo. <laughs> And then um, semester in Thailand is the second most popular. Intern in Barcelona is another really strong option, especially during the summer. So if, you have, um, if you're interested in doing something a little bit less traditional, not just taking classes, but having a customized internship experience, uh, intern in Barcelona is a, a solid bet. Um, Florence is, again, a really strong option. Um, it's at Florence University of the Arts, semester and summer programs there. And then a little bit further south in Sorrento, Italy, somewhere on the Italian coast. I can't think of many uh, places I would want to spend summer in um, more than Sorrento, Italy. And then lately, um, we've just launched some virtual programs. So you might have heard of virtual study abroad or virtual internships abroad. Um, we have a number of program models just like this. And students have been doing virtual global internships with us. And this is just like an internship that you would have on site in one of our locations like Barcelona, except it's happening virtually. It's happening just like this over, over Zoom. Um, so you're meeting with uh, your, your supervisor on a daily basis to, to work on a project that is a real project. It's something that is important to the organization that you're placed with. Um, so something to look into if, if uh, travel is not in your immediate future. And then uh, I just, Earlier today, I had a few minutes and I quickly Googled University of Alabama photos on our, in our kind of database. 
And it was easy to find tons and tons of photos for, that were submitted by Alabama students in the last few years. Um, so give a shout out if you recognize any of your friends. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, just really neat set of photos from all over the world. That's what I, I love about this. We have uh, Italy on here, Australia, I think Spain, more Australia, um, France, Peru, everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see that. So um, not just thinking about study abroad from a location specific point of view, but from an academic point of view, where can I do something in my major? Um, one thing about academics at CIS, as I mentioned, we have programs at universities all over the world from, from small private institutions to big research institutions like Alabama. Um, typically you're taking classes with local students and we can accommodate really any, any term of study abroad. Um, in terms of finding the program that's best for you, at CISabroad.com, we have a great um, program search tool. And you'll see it in the top right here. This is a quick screenshot. You'll hover over find a program, then find by academic major. And I honestly, I will use this all the time when I'm speaking with students. So find something that's closest to your major, say your business, click on that. And then you can, after that, kind of scroll down and find the subsections of business. So economics, uh, marketing, uh, accounting and things like that and dial in and really find the program that's best for you. And that also works in the same way for internship programs. Um, so if you want to see where we can place you as a, for example, uh, mass communications major, um, we, can, we can show you some sample placements and uh, do a search tool just like that as well. So a common question uh, for for students at study abroad fairs is, you know, what's included in the program fee? Um, this, I'm not gonna go through all these, but basically you can rest assured that with CIS abroad, our program fee includes pretty much everything you're going to need during your time abroad, except for spending money, obviously, um, your flight and then meals on site. And even meals are included in some of our programs if you do a homestay. Um, so homestays are particularly uh, prevalent in Spanish speaking locations and also some of our Italy programs. So keep that in mind. If, if language acquisition is, is a big goal of yours, I would very much recommend a homestay. Okay, and then just quickly about funding. This is another uh, very important question. How do you fund a program? Um, so definitely talk with the, the study abroad office at Alabama about financial aid and how you can apply that. Um, and also, if you're looking at funding opportunities through CIS abroad, we have an affiliate discount, which um, Alabama students are eligible for. So you can receive $250 off a semester program and $100 off a short-term program. Um, we also have a number of scholarships and grants that you can apply for on our website. And then from time to time, we offer different promo codes, which work just like a coupon code. You put it in the, uh, on the page when you apply. Um, so check our website often for, for updates around those. Uh, but we very much encourage students to apply for as many as they can. And then I don't want to dig, dig too deep into this, but I, I suppose I'm kind of addressing the, the elephant in the room here. This is an uncertain time in kind of the history of the world a little bit uh, with the pandemic, as you know. Um, and where does study abroad fit in with all of this? Um, obviously, I think we think um, in, in education abroad that all of the benefits of going abroad and pursuing education in another country are uh, just as applicable and even more so now during this time when we all feel a little bit disconnected. Um, so this, this slide kind of outlines ways that CIS Abroad is approaching um, the uncertainty that kind of prevails during this pandemic. Um, and you can see here our approach to, uh, to different uh, parts of it. So we have a three-step risk mitigation process. So particularly this applies to spring programming. If you're interested in going abroad for spring 2021, um, that's very much possible. We have a program list of 18 uh, programs that are available and open and currently accepting applications. Um, the big takeaway here um, is that we're not running programs in places where we don't feel very confident that we're able to do so safely and in a way that will allow you to um, uh, continue your academics if for some reason your semester abroad was interrupted. 
Uh, we also have site-specific risk management plans. So you can see some of that information on our website. And then um, one of the big things, one of the big pieces of uncertainty is around finances and refunds. Um, so we have a, a very clear refund policy um, that is available on our website. Um, we have um, the ability for students for spring 21, spring 2021 to um, be refunded as much as possible up to the date uh, of departure if for some reason they had to withdraw. Um, so feel free to reach us, out to us about that if you're planning to go uh, abroad in spring 2021. I'll be happy to, to help plan with you. So I'm probably, I don't know if I'm over my 10 minutes here, but I just have one or two more. Um, so where next from here? Next steps, we, I tried to kind of make this very simple. Um, what I would recommend doing, check out the programs on cisabroad.com that, that interest you. Use that program search tool, find you know, programs in Spain for um, you know, digital media and design majors, uh, if that's you. And, um, and see what's available. And then talk with a uh, study abroad advisor like Sarah um, at your institution. And then you can begin your application uh, both at your university and at cisabroad.com. And at CIS, you'll just find this apply now button and you can proceed from there. And if you want even more specifics, we have um, a great video series on our YouTube channel. So I would recommend checking this out. It takes you through every step of the process from getting started all the way to going on site and returning home. And then I will leave this slide up, I believe. This is uh, how you can get in touch with us and our advising team. Um, but I would love to take any questions, if anything came up during that presentation that um, you know, you'd like to know more about, feel free to unmute yourself or drop something in the chat and we can, um, we can talk through it. Awesome, thank you, Kent. Hey everyone, I apologize for not introducing myself in the beginning due to some technical difficulties. We were trying to get started not to waste your time. Um, so my name is Sarah Kidwell. I am one of the Education Abroad Advisors here at UA. Um, I will be here if you want to shoot me any DM questions that I can present to the group or if you just want to unmute or share your video, you're welcome to do that as well and ask Kit any questions you might have. questions might be what kind of scholarships does CIS abroad offer um, mm -hmm. that aren't like UA specific scholarships? Yeah, good question. Um, so for scholarships, we have a number of them. Uh, we have an academic merit scholarship uh, that students can apply for. We also have a number of identity-based scholarships. Uh, so these are really focused at um, kind of helping underrepresented groups um, participate in study abroad experiences. So for example, we have a rainbow scholarship, um, for LGBTQ plus students, we have a student of color scholarship um, that's for that student population. Um, so check those out on our website. Um, we also have a number of grants which are different. Um, a lot of these will apply for, um, for helping you pay for your flight and things like that. Um, so there's some good opportunities for funding there. We have one question. Would I be able to apply my UA scholarships for a semester towards a semester abroad through CIS. Um, yes, you can use your UA scholarships most of the time um, for our affiliate-based study abroad program. So CIS abroad is one of our affiliates um, and you will be able to use your scholarship as long as you're enrolled in um, courses that are getting class credit for. Any yeah. other questions? Maybe I can turn the tables and throw out a question to you all. Just throw out your major and maybe we can talk a little bit about, um, you know, what programs are popular for, for that particular major. And Sarah, I can't actually see the chat, so. Okay, if, it's um, chemical engineering or accounting or two people. Okay, nice. Um, so for chemical engineering, um, I talked to a lot of students who are who are in like um, different different fields in, in engineering that maybe feel like there aren't a lot of opportunities for them. But typically, we find that if students are willing to go to um, somewhere like Australia or uh, 
for example, uh, at the University of Sydney or the University of Melbourne or La Trobe University, um, places like that. Also in um, South Africa, the University of Cape Town, another strong option for engineers. Um, we're typically able to accommodate them. And if you have, um, if, you ha if you're not an upper level student and you still have some of those kind of um, foundational courses, courses available, I would recommend our Thailand program, particularly around anything related to um, the natural sciences or hard sciences. Um, it's a really strong option. And Another then for, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Another good engineering program would be um, Dublin City University. Dublin with, City, yeah. Yeah, it's abroad. And I was actually going to mention that one for accounting as well. Okay. Um, really strong business school in Dublin. Um, for account, I was an accounting major in college initially. Um, and I know from, from at least my experience, uh, there were a lot of courses that were not accounting specific until I got into you know, my junior and, and senior year. So if you, if you need those marketing management uh, finance classes like that, our program in Prague at uh, the University of Economics is really strong. Also our program at the University of uh, Autonomous University of Barcelona, particularly strong as well. And so that would be in the yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, business majors are, are kind of spoiled for choice in terms of <laughs> where they can uh, study abroad. Um, and also for business majors, I think our, um, our intern uh, programs are particularly strong as well. Um, so lots of placements in a variety of fields with all the way from, you know, startups um, to large multinational organizations where you're um, kind of learning uh, about, about business from uh, kind of a ground up level. What other questions are there? What schools are available in South Korea? South Korea, good question. Yeah, so um, we work with, um, Sogong University, um, it's in Seoul, um, particularly strong for the sciences. Um, in the summer, we have a program there that is focused on um, Korean language and K-pop. Uh, so if you're interested in K-pop at all, um, we had a video, not this past summer, but the last summer that came through uh, of students doing a K-pop dance class, uh, which just looked like so much fun. <laughs> um, and also we work with Kyung Hee University. Um, so there's a program there. It's, it's only uh, a summer program, but it's particularly prestigious for international relations students. So if international affairs, um, international relations, anything like that interests you, definitely look into Kyung Hee. Very cool. And um, Maya, if you are interested um, in talking to any of our students who have gone to South Korea, actually two of our student assistants went there in the last year. Very cool. So, <laughs> becoming more and more popular location. It really is. Um, we've noticed that we, we have launched, um, it was going to run for the first time this past summer, but it's a multi-country Asia program in the summer. So students go to Japan for two weeks and then South Korea for a month. Um, and do either that uh, K-pop program or the international relations program. Um, so if you're interested in East Asia, that's a very unique opportunity to get a glimpse of both countries. Any other questions before we wrap this up? <laughs> Anything you'd like to add, Kit? No, I would just say, um, you know, thanks for, thanks for joining. I think um, any student who's interested in study abroad right now with, with um, all of the, you know, the craziness going on in the world, I think your, your head's in the right place. Um, this is, um, you know, there's been a slight interruption to study abroad, obviously, in the past year. Um, but I think it's more important than ever to, to get exposed to other cultures and, and travel. I certainly know I want to travel very badly right now. Maybe you feel the same, Sarah. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to do so lately. Um, so yeah, we're, we're standing by and, and kind of, uh, we're just excited to help, help plan your next adventure. Definitely. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I have a flight book for January. So. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> so.
stuff. Well, thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions, this will be recorded and actually posted online at a later date. Um, so you can rewatch it if you have any, don't remember something or have any more questions. Um, his contact information is on our website as well. Mine is on there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, make sure to enter our giveaway on Instagram. We're actually giving away a CIS Broad passport holder. So check us out there. Nice. I dropped my email address too. Feel free to, to shoot me an email if you like. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>